you might guess from the presentation today that I've been under a lot of stress. Maybe, you, maybe you'll notice my, my mouth twitching a little bit. You might see that my, my hands are shaking or convulsing somewhat. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But first, I was thinking a couple of days ago that I might try making a comeback as a softball player. Several years ago, I played on this D or Leisure League uh, softball team. They were We called ourselves the Conundrums. We were really good. We had a powerhouse team, some sluggers that were that were, were they could hit the ball, you know, you know, they could smack it. <laughs> I was known as a clutch hitter on the team. In critical situations, I always came through. They called me Clutch Tommy. So I thought I'd you know, maybe I'll call up the old guys and see if they're interested in uh, reforming. But before, I thought I better practice first to see if I still had it as a as a player. So I was I went out to to practice and I was going to do some hitting, fielding, and and catching drills. And I needed a trainer, so I called up the only guy that I knew that could help me with that, and that was. Um, uh, Tony Mark, it was his name, Tony Mark. Well, actually, his middle name was Slash. Um, not Slash, you know, the Guns N' Roses, you know, you know, rang, guitarist. But uh, Slash, like the, the punctuation mark there, Tony Slash Mark. So I called up uh, Tony Slash, and... Um, he came out, and he's really good at what he does. Um, he's real slick with handling the ball. Everything was going great. Uh, first thing that we did is we did some hitting. And so I got the bat, and I stood at the plate, and I swung the, at the ball a, a couple of times. And I was just really good at that. I remember that that bat felt so natural in my hands, and when I was swinging, it was just so fluid. It was like this little teeny ball was, to me, in my eyes, as it was coming toward me, was like a big beach ball. Or maybe, maybe a fit ball. I don't know. Next, we did some, some fielding drills, and I was scooping everything up. Nothing got past me. I was just eating, eating it up, and so that felt really good. Finally, I went into the outfield, and he hit me up just a couple of pop-ups. I don't even think I needed the glove, to be honest. I could just, when it was like that and like that, you know, it's like catching everything. And I was, walked off of that field and I thought, man, I, I still have it. I still got feel, I'm still clutch. Earlier in the week, I was thinking, I think I'm going to come out of retirement and start a new vocation. So I thought, well, what could I do? And the first thing that popped into my head was, why not become an astro-nuclear physicist? That sounds like something, like a, like a good job. But then I thought about it a little more, and I said, wait a second. You know, you're going to have to do a lot of schooling and it's going to take about a year to get your degree. I just don't think I have that much time that I want to invest in that. So I put that on the shelf. 
So the next thing I thought about was, okay, I think I'd be good at a as a puppet talk show host. So I said, I said I'm gonna send an audition video to um, my local PBS station and see what they say. You know, maybe they'll like it, and maybe I can make a, a second career out of that. So I had a couple of guests on the show, and of course they had to be puppets because it's a puppet talk show. My first guest, uh, her name was Zelda McGriff, just as great little reptile. She actually goes by her stage name, which is Zelda the Dinosaur. So she comes on and... We're getting along great, having a fun time. She's just uh, a great gal. And she starts talking about her, her family history. And I guess she signed up for some type of ancestral um, service that will help her find, you know, like her, you know, previous generations of her family. And... I guess it was 65 million years ago that she traced back to her great, 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 great uh, grandmother. What was so cool about this conversation was Zelda told me that she found her her diary. Wow, I thought I thought that was that was who you know how how did that happen? And. What she told me was that she read through it. Her last entry in the diary in which she wrote, Huh, I wonder what that fireball is, that great big fireball up in the sky. And that was her last entry. She says that when her family gets together for reunions, they talk about it all the time. So Now, my second guest, his name was Elmo. He was, he was a little stinker. We were initially having pleasant conversation, getting to know one another. And he, you know, he mentions to me that He's a little hard of hearing, and would I mind getting coming a little closer to him? So, you know, like this or, you know, like that. So I get closer to, to Elmo. Next thing you know, he honks my nose. Well, I didn't think that was very nice, and I told him so. He started laughing, and, you know, of course, that made me angrier, Things fell into chaos after that because he was just taunting me and he wouldn't let up. I stopped the interview saying, this is, this is over. We're done here. You know, I'm not going to put up with that. And I just, you know, threw my arms up and I just walked off the set. But even after I had left the set, Elmo continued to egg me on. So I went after him. I was going to tear him apart. If it wasn't for my producer, I don't know what would have happened. Overall, however, I think the demo went very well. And I'm looking forward to hearing back from PBS. You never know. I mean, eventually one day I could hit the big time and uh, have my own late night people talk show hosts so Kimmel Colbert Fallon watch out now finally <clears throat> many of you probably can tell from my actions today and my mannerisms that I am not well and I think that all of the stress from having to do these weekly COVID 
videos recounting all of my you know activities uh, during the stay at home it's taken its toll so I just had to call on my old psychoanalyst Dr. Von Munchen I've known Dr. Von Munchen he's been my psychoanalyst for over 30 years so I want to show you uh, a clip from our last session so you can see how he operates and I think he really helped me make progress um, on the road to well-being so uh, please take a take a gander there oh. Dr. Von Munchen, I can't take it anymore. The pressure from doing these COVID stay at home videos, it's driving me crazy. I, I can't eat. Really? It looks like you put on five pounds since our last session. The stress is so great. I, I, I'm not sleeping at night. Uh-huh. Last week, you told me you were sleeping 12 hours a day. Well, Doc, I I'm so jittery, I can't walk a straight line. Now that I understand. Have you recovered since falling in that sewer hole the other day? Uh, Doc, listen, I'm desperate. I I can you help me? Relax, I've got just the thing. Do you have access to a nuclear reactor? Not anymore. Good, that never works. Let's try a Hippocratic technique. Close your eyes. Lean back. More. More. Damn it, do you run my help or not? How do you feel? Well, I, I think I broke my arm. Great. Great. Oh, why is that great? Do you still feel anxious? Uh, 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 well, no, actually. Oh, Doc, you're a genius. Splendid, I'll bill you. Uh, you might want to get that arm checked out. Uh, uh. Well, as you can see, I'm doing much better as a result of my session with Dr. Von Munchen. I do want to admonish you that his techniques are a bit askew, uh, perhaps unconventional. As a matter of fact, uh, I'm still a little sore uh, from uh, that uh, fibia uh, dislocation. So, but, um, well, I guess that is a wrap, as they say in the uh, puppet show, uh, talk show biz. Who knows, maybe next time when you see me, uh, you know, I might be this big Johnny Carson type star. Hope success doesn't affect me. Well, we'll uh, we'll just have to uh, keep our fingers crossed. So. Can I uncross them now? I really like to. <laughs> <laughs>